Good afternoon. I'm Daniel Guest, and welcome to the Imagine Golf Podcast, brought to you by Imagine Golf and PXG. You can go to our site, imaginegolf.com, to see all of our offerings, including our free drills, our practice plans, our golf ebooks and videos, and or to book a lesson with me, either at our state of the art studio right outside of Philadelphia or virtually on our partner site, golfliveapp.com. And you can sign up for free tips and videos that go out once a week, every week by simply dropping us your email. Hey, let's talk about stats, right? Stats in golf, right? Imagine that. There's and for any, any sport today, there's tons of stats, but golf, it's just, it's overwhelming, it seems like, with all the different stats that are available. Um, all you got to do is, is watch one, one golf event or read one golf article uh, or listen to one golf podcast and you're going to get, you know, a plethora of stats. Um, and they all have, you know, a, a, a purpose. I'm quite certain of that, right? And, and plenty of them have an indicator of some's, one, one's ability, I should say, right? But if you're an amateur and you're trying to get better and you're using some of the same stats that professionals use uh, and you're using them incorrectly, you're not going to get any better. It's not going to give you a picture of your actual game, right? So let's talk about three stats um, that really matter. And, and, and candidly, it's really the three stats that that's our whole practice is built around, right? If, if we, every one of our students, 4,000 plus of them, um, we work on um, these three stats and we call it the imagined score, right? And I'm going to explain that more um, uh, in a few minutes here. But essentially, you've got to know what your potential score is, right? And, and where your not only what your goal is, but what you could do if you eliminated X, whatever X is, right? So those three stats that we look at on a daily basis with all of our students, and you should too, are simply penalty strokes, two chips, and three putts. Let me say that again. Penalty strokes, two chips to the green, and, and three putts. If you just looked at those three stats and kept a, a record of those you know, right, uh, on every round that you play and try to get better at those three things, you would lower your scores significantly. Significantly. Forget greens and regulation. Forget fairways and regulation, right? Just worry about those three stats, all right? And if you added those up after every round, and let's say you got 13, and you subtracted it from your score, right? That's your potential or your imagined score. That's what you could shoot without really changing a ton in your game, right? Except getting better at those three things, right? So you, you, don't, you don't have to work on your swing as much as you may think you are. You don't have to, how you do, you don't have to go to the driving range and be a range rat, you know, every day, four days a week, whatever, whatever the numbers are. You have to improve those three things. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about those right now and, and, and what you can do um, to improve those things right away, right? The first thing is you gotta start tracking them, all right? So every round, you gotta track them. Every student that we work with, when they come in, we ask them, hey, how, how's it going? How'd you play? What was your score? What was your imagined score? Right. And if they're not tracking that, it makes it really hard for us to, to really get their game dialed in like they want to. We can, of course, we can make their swing better and more efficient, no doubt about it. But they've got to know those numbers. All right. That gives us a picture as an instruction firm or as an instructor, I should say. That gives us a picture of what we need to work on the most. And ultimately, that's what it's all about, right? Reducing your score and having more fun, all right? So, and by the way, th these three stats, you, you know, it doesn't matter what level you're at, right? You could be in the hundreds, you could be in the 90s, the 80s, or even the 70s. These are the most common um, challenges for every golfer at every level. So let's start tracking them, right? Um, penalty strokes, let's start with that. Penalty strokes is defined by any stroke, right, that costs you another stroke. So it's not necessarily just a traditional um, nature of a penalty stroke where it's out of bounds, in the water, you know, unplayable lie, all that stuff. If you hit a shot and it goes underneath a tree, as an example, that's a penalty stroke. If you hit a shot and it's uh, obviously it's out of bounds, penalty stroke. If you hit a shot and it's an unplayable lie, I, again, obviously it's a penalty stroke. But if you hit another shot and it forces you to, you know, you hit it in a, a bunker that has a 10 foot high, you know, ridge, if you would, and you can only come out sideways, that's a penalty stroke, right? 
So keep track of those penalty strokes, right? If you, if you can't hit your next shot appropriately and advance the golf ball, that's a penalty stroke, all right? Um, and just when you talk about it out loud, you know, you, you know that there's plenty of those penalty shots in a round for the average golfer. So we got to limit those. And most penalty shots, right, are not from just a poor shot, right? What I mean by that is you get up on a tee box and you slip and you hit a poor shot or you, you turn your wrist over and you hook the ball. You know, that's just a poor shot. Most penalty shots are from poor decisions, right? The golfer made a poor decision, and because of that, they put themselves in an adverse position, right? So the, the typical hero shot, right? You're, you see a window. You, you, you pull your first shot just a little bit right of the target or whatever, and you're, there's now a tree in your way, and you see you know, a 10-foot window between a million different golf branches and leaves, and you're going to try to hit it between that in that 10 foot window, right? And, and, and you, again, when you just say it out loud, you know you're not gonna hit that, right? Um, that's a poor decision and that would be a penalty shot, all right? So we wanna limit those poor decisions and we wanna limit those penalty shots. And I got news for you, if you just start tracking just the penalty shots, you're gonna, you're gonna lower that number because you're gonna think about it differently. So start tracking on the bottom of the scorecard, top of the scorecard, where, however, on your phone, whatever, start tracking those penalty shots. All right. Two chips. Two chips is defined by a shot, an approach shot inside of 75 yards that we have to hit it on the green. All right. So any shot inside of 70 yards, you have an opportunity to get it on the green and you should only take one shot. So if you take that shot from 75 yards and you hit on a green side bunker, that's, you know, another shot you have to hit. That's two chips. All right. So we, we want to track anything plus one chip. So any shot that doesn't land you on the green and give you a shot to putt or a chance to putt is two chips, right? Now, many of you are going to take two, three, four chips sometimes to get up on the green, and you're going to add those up, and that's going to be your score on that hole, right? But just, again, just saying it out loud, from a fundamental standpoint, we've got to hit those greens when we have an opportunity. And speaking of fundamentals, listen, most – most people that are having a, have a challenge with chipping, right? They're, they're, they're trying to do too much with the golf ball, right? They're, tr they're trying to get that beautiful flop shot, if you would. They're trying to get it close to the pin and they short side themselves or they hit it, you know, in that short side bunker, if you would. Um, th that's the majority of people, all right? And then there's a, the next level is people that just golfers that just don't know what to do. So they get up there and they fundamentally, they don't have a plan, right? They don't know how to chip and they just grab their pitching wedge because it's a inside of 70 yards and they take a regular shot and have at it, if you would. So um, it's usually one of those two things when, I, when we do playing lessons with individuals. They're either A, like I said, trying to do too much or fundamentally they just don't have a technique um, and they're just, you know, gripping it and ripping it and hoping they get it up there on the green. So, and obviously we can work on both of those, okay? But track those two chips. And then the last one, three putts. And that includes any time you have a putter in your hand. So if you're 20 yards off uh, the green, but it's really short, the fairway is really short and you're putting it, that's a putt. So any time that you have three putts, right, before that ball gets in the hole, you're going to be tracking that, all right? Three putts are normally caused, believe it or not, not by aim, right? People say to me all the time, oh, I can't read the greens. My aim is terrible, whatever. And then I, I go play with them, and they're hitting the, the, the putt 10 feet past the target, right? That's not aim. That's speed, right? So most individuals, most amateur golfers have a bigger problem with speed than they do with aim, right? So, or then they do with green reading and all that stuff as well. Speed is the biggest killer, okay? So let, let's work on speed first and foremost before we work on our green reading skills and all that stuff, and you'll be a better putter, all right? Here's, here's a great drill, okay? So get on a green, get on a practice green, and measure out 40 feet from where you're starting, 40 feet. So put a towel down, put a tee down or whatever, but measure 40 feet. And then come back and measure 15 feet from where you are. So where you're standing, you now have two marks, if you would. You have one at 15 feet and you have one at 40 feet. Then you're going to take a bunch of balls and you're going to put the first ball just past 15 feet. Okay. So let's say it's 15 feet, seven inches. 
You're going to take the next putt, your second putt, and you're going to put it past 15 feet, uh, seven inches. Okay. And then you're going to take the next putt and you're going to put that one past the next, the previous putt and on and on and on and on until you finally get to 40 feet. All right. Some of you will do that drill and will only take three or four or five putts and you're at the 40 foot mark. And then others of you will end up with 10 putts, 13 putts or whatever. Obviously, the more putts you can take in that drill, the better you're going to be at reading or, or achieving a speed um, uh, balance, if you would. Right. So we need to have an understanding of how fast we hit every shot if we're going to be a better putter. And that doesn't mean that doesn't matter. I should say whether it's three foot, five foot or 10 foot. If the speed is off on any of those putts, you're going to likely miss the putt. So there, that, and by the way, that's called a ladder drill. It's really an easy, easy drill to get better, all right? And then again, just simply add up those numbers. Get your score at the end. So the end of a round, you had three penalty strokes, right? You had five two chips, and you had two three putts. That's 10. You shot an 85, you could have shot a 75. That's your imagined score. That's your potential. Imagine if you could get a grip on those three things and that would that's what your score would be all right and that's in your current skill level meaning you didn't really improve your swing per se right you're improving your course management you're improving the way that you think about golf you're improving the decision making process when you stand over a golf ball you're improving the game of golf not just the fundamental swing if you would now, we did a whole podcast on stop playing golf swing and start playing the game of golf, right? Once someone grasps that concept, they can get better. I mean, they can score better, right? And, and listen, I, I'm not against working on your golf swing. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that when you're playing golf, play the game, right? Play the game. And this imagine score, this potential score, this this way of tracking right what you're good at and what you're not good at should give you an indicator of what you need to work on right if you're three putting all over the place no matter what you do you've got to work on that right away right forget going to the range and working on your drive we've got to work on your putting if your three if your two chip or your two chips are all over the place Right. Meaning you're taking three and four and, and multiple chips on every hole for crying out loud or even just, you know, a few holes. You need to work on that and take a lesson and get some technique and, and know what you're doing. All right. And likewise, if you're if you're the guy that goes for everything, guy or girl, if you're the person that goes for everything, that makes poor decisions, makes poor decisions off the tee box. Right. And by the way, let's talk about the tee box really quick. If you don't have a strategy, if you don't get up there on the tee box, right, and take a look at the hole and take a take a, a just a, a, a mental minute, if you would, as a hey, what is the strategy on this hole? Right. If you're the guy that just gets up there and you know puts the tee in the middle of the tee box and grips it and rips it, you're gonna get what you get, right? Right. If you're not playing every hole to your strength and weakness, you're gonna get what you get. If your miss is to the right and there's water on the right, and you don't take that into consideration. You just say to yourself, hey, man, I'm going to hit this straight. I'm not going to hit this in the water. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't, golf doesn't work like that. I wish it did, right? So we've got to make better decisions, and we've got to work on the pieces and parts of our game that are going to help us be better. And this, this imagined score, right, this, this, uh, this way to, to track the stats that really matter will get you better in golf almost immediately almost immediately. And you can't take a lesson at Imagine without knowing your Imagine score, right? So, I mean, you can in the first lesson because obviously we never met before, but all of our students, trust me, know their Imagine score and you should too, all right? That's it. That's all I have today. Uh, thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit the follow button wherever you get your podcast and be sure, be sure I should say, to check out our site, ImagineGolf.com. And you can follow us on all of our uh, social media platforms. And again, if you want to book a lesson with me in our state-of-the-art studio, um, you'll be better for it uh, right outside of Philadelphia or our take a virtual lesson. Virtual lessons, in my opinion, are absolutely the next wave in golf. We're doing more and more of them every day. Um, it's just as good uh, as a, a lesson in person. 
And believe me, um, I didn't used to think that for sure. So I've come a long way with regards to virtual lessons, but I, I've seen them benefit people significantly, right? Two minute lesson, five minute lesson, 20 minute lesson, an hour long lesson um, through our, our partner, um, golflibeapp.com. And um, again, you'll be, you'll be glad you did. Uh, and by the way, all those um, virtual lessons are recorded. The entire session is recorded. So you have a record of every single lesson that you took, which is a kind of cool benefit. All right, thanks. And uh, here's to getting you the game you've always imagined.